Today I'm excited to show you how to take your seismic data to the next level with the integration of super resolution open source code into the E framework. You're gonna love this. Because not only is super resolution a powerful tool that can be used to enhance the resolution of seismic data beyond that is possible with traditional methods, but with the E framework you can use it for free on any seismic data. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, but I don't know anything about coding or machine learning. But don't you worry, the E-Framework is an application built to democratize the use of machine learning applications in oil and gas industry. It is user-friendly and it's easy to navigate, so you don't need to be a coding genius to use it. In this video, we're going to take a step-by-step -step approach to show you how to install the E-Framework with super resolution and demonstrate how to manage the user interface. And before we dive into the tutorial, I just want to give a quick shout out to Geoplot AI. It is a commercial product for geoscientists that have an advanced seismic conditioning as a part of ML toolset. Our customers receive a set of pre-trained networks that are proven to be of the highest quality. Give it a try to see the difference it can make on your workflow. Just follow the link in the description below. Alright, let's get back to the tutorial and start enhancing the seismic data of yours. Alright, the first thing that we need to do, we need to follow the link in the description to get into the eFramework repo. Copy the git URL, paste it in your terminal with the git clone command, wait to finish the cloning process, then go into the folder, and start the streamlit process by running the command streamlit run hello.py. As usual, we see the welcome page. And then we go into the import seismic tab to get our seismic into the program. Copying path to the seismic and making sure it is formatted correctly. Go into the import file tab where you will see the visualization of this seismic as well as the frequency spectrum plot. On the left side menu, look for the item 3D seismic denoising plus super resolution. This add-on is built based on the work done by Jin Tao Li. Here I copied the abstract from the original paper so that you would get the sense of what is going on with the script. There are several videos that you can use as a reference point on this topic as well. Before going further, make sure that you install all the external dependencies. And the next thing that you need to do is to clone the repository of seismic super resolution. As of now, there is no folder in the e-framework for that. You need to hit the clone button. After that, it will automatically download the wrapper inside the folder structure. If you're finding this video informative and useful, please consider liking and sharing it with your colleagues and friends. Not only will it help others learn more about the latest developments in oil and gas, but will also help our channel to reach a larger audience. And after that, you need to download the pre-trained network that the author supplied us with by going through the link on this Google Drive. Download it and put it in the folder. In order to get index all the files that we put in the folder, we need to rerun the eFramework application. As usual, in eFramework we need to define the volume that we want to work with, because sometimes we don't want to calculate the whole volume. Let's for example decrease the range for the X lines. And below you will see visualization of the crop volume. Let's go ahead into the calculation tab. There are two ways to calculate the volume. Since you know that it is a 2D network, we can take a full slice or go patch by patch. For the patch based method, you need to select how many pixels are going to be in XY direction, or in other words, how many traces in the inline and cross lines you want to have. After that, you need to define directions that we are going to go through. It could be inline or cross line direction. And the final parameter that you can specify is the compute engine. And uh, there is a problem. You see that the error says that the patch has to be smaller than the dimension of the seismic. Remember that we've cut the volume for the X-line direction. And that's why we need to specify the patch size that would be smaller than the smallest dimension of our cropped volume. And after we hit the submit button, we see that the process start evolving. 
we see the wait time, as well as we see how many slices we have already computed. After a while, we see that the process is finished. Going below, you will see the comparison window. On the left is the original Seismic and on the right is the process Seismic Cube. You already see even on this scale that the resolution has increased. Alright, the last thing that we need to do is to save the volume. We need to specify the path to the folder as well as the file name. And hit the save button. After saving the process volume, we can import it into our commercial software for the analysis. We can see that the reflections are more refined and faulting features are more pronounced after the processing. So it's a good idea to try it on your project and see the benefits that it can bring to you. It's good to use it for the structural analysis. And after you try it, leave a comment what you think about it. Check out my other video about the faulting network that's been integrated into the E-Framework as well.